notes this morning. Use me for your glory, Father. Bring total recall to my mind of everything and anything that you need to say to this, your people today. Father, help us to be alert and active and energized as the word is coming forth. Now, we remind Satan, real simple, you're under our feet. No weapon formed against us today will prosper. This word will go forth unhindered by any demonic intervention or any demonic force. Now, Father, we thank you that we do pledge our allegiance to you, the Lord our God, who is above and beyond all other gods. We love you today. We thank you again for this word. Let it go down in us a great seed and come up an awesome harvest in our lives as we develop in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen and amen to the glory of God. All right, what we are talking about today is developing, uh, committed to developing me. How many of you have been doing really, really good with this lesson? You, you're, you're, you're finding that your, your desire to be better and to do better is launching forth. How many of you, as we said about a week or two ago, that you're finding yourself uh, like being challenged and, and some stuff like coming up ugly? Yeah, some stuff ain't coming out so pretty. You know, we got to come face to face. We got to confront some things because when you're developing you, then the things that are not making you the person that you need to be, those things have to come up so God can shave those things away. I used to live in the country, so we would go into the woods or even in the yard and pick up an old stick. And if you play around with that stick and remove all the bark, you'll have the prettiest pale looking uh object in your hands, but you had to peel away the barky, barky stuff to get to the really nice stuff. And that's what God is doing in our lives. It's like he wants to get to the good stuff. Nothing wrong with the barky, barky, because Noah built an arky, arky. Okay? So I'm not beating up on the barky, barky. I'm just trying to make an illustration here so you'll know that there's something about your life that goes beyond what we can see right now. I like me. I do, I do like me. Because I don't want you to get this message twisted. I want you to realize that, look, you got to tell yourself, you know what? I do like me. I really do like me. But I agree that there are some things about me that I can tweak and change to make me even better. Isn't that right? All right. So, and I'm not going to wait for somebody else to come and bust me out. I mean, that may still happen too. Because, see, in, in the Bible says in a man's eyes, he, everything about him is good. In your own eyes, you don't see no wrong. You don't see no fault. You know, why didn't they do it this way? This is the way I said it. I, 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 no, I. And then if it doesn't go my way, then it is not right, right? So, no, 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 I want God to work on me, you know, bring about change in my life or show me what I need to change. Because we say, well, why didn't God change that? Well, you know, he's not going to change that. The greatest thing that a man has working in his or her life is your will. Will you change? I was a child. I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, what happened? I put away childish things. So God still left the responsibility to us to put away what was not feasible for life. Right now, I'm going through a major cleanup in my life, uh, physical as well. And so, hallelujah, I got a witness in the back of the room. As a matter of fact, you were a part of my motivation. You started cleaning your closet, and I went into my files. Why would I do that? But I did that. So I'm going through all these papers, and I'm finding business cards from, like, years ago. I'm finding second grade perfect attendance uh, certificates that says I was good at, at Whitesville Elementary School, and I did really good. I was a great student, and who my teacher was, Shirley Diane Stoney. If y'all see her, know her, let me know. I've been looking for her for years. But anyway, all the, all the way back, 1975 certificates, 19, oh, Lord, 85. My first thing I did with the Reformed Episcopal Church, uh, emceeing a little program as a young girl. Oh, my God, all this stuff. And then I'm running across some things. I said, you know what? Now, that stuff I will keep forever. Now, but there's some other stuff and people that came through my life. This has been such a great exercise for me. 
there are some people that have come through, but by now you got to help me here because I'm a pack rat also. Where are the pack rats in the house? You think that everything you're going to need again at some point in life, somebody may rise again from the dead, and you got to show them this thing so you keep everything because you never know. Your great-great-grandchild might need this for the mini-series that they're going to do on your life. Hello. You a pack rat too? To be a pack rat in a small place is not a good thing. You drive people absolutely crazy. So that's, <laughs> so that's me. So I, but I had to have this, since this message about committed to developing a better me, what I had to do was I had to go through these papers and cards, and I got this big shredder right there, and I go, and so the Holy Spirit says, are you going to need that? Is this somebody that you need to keep in your phone? Is this something that you need to hang on to? If not, it was just for a season. Let it what? Go. But when you're talking to a pack rat, that is not an easy thing because we always think that everything has reincarnate ability. If you keep it, it'll rise up to be something else or it'll do somebody some good. Woo. Lord have mercy. All right? So, okay, don't fuss at your, your partners or your friends or your family member right now. Y'all take that to the house and talk about it. But pack rats, hello, where are you? We've got to set ourselves free, why don't we? Oh, my goodness. So, but it's been a great exercise, a great exercise. This spiritual message on being committed to developing a better me has made me not just move in the spiritual arena, but has now moved to my physical arena. I had some file cabinets brought, and I mean, I'm taking all the old stuff and I'm bringing it over into the new. I'm consolidating what I might need to look at in the past for certain things, but other things I'm really trying to let go. Now, I hadn't gotten to the homeschooling box. I've got like four tubs, red, blue, purple, full of stuff, Destiny's first writing where I taught her how to read. Hey, Becca, BJU, how could I? And I threw some stuff away about five years ago, but boy, those, I mean, it's just, it's tough. It really is tough. I think her children will want to see that. And if I don't put it on a computer, they probably couldn't care less, right? If they can't pull it up with some, you know, some technology, they probably wouldn't care less. But um, I just, it's just, it's just that pack rat thing. But a part of really being free is you got to go back and say, now, how is this going to advance me? Is this person still very, you know, are they still necessary? Or is this somebody that from years ago, I mean, years ago, I even went and sang in the mosque one year. I mean, that kind of stuff. I keep, I have my, all my accomplishments catalog, but I sang in a mosque and I did something for the veterans back in 19, ooh, 83, 84. Um, so it's a lot of stuff I did over the years, but a lot of other stuff that's just baggage. You know how many times I moved? As a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to do a big book drive. We made a theater in one of our rooms at the house. And so instead of just calling it a theater, we call it a theater prairie because I, had, I needed a place to put my books that I have traveled with ever since I was out of high school. I can't let those books go. Ask me how many times I've read some of those books. Not since the 12th grade or the 11th grade. And what about my cousin's books who she couldn't care less, that's why she left them, and I have them. Because I just never knew when I might need something. And if you really want to study the essence and the elementary facet of something to really get understanding, you go back to a lower level of where you first, you know, kind of the law of first mention thing. And I still have all those books. My children couldn't care. They, would, they won't be going back to that. I don't think my grandkids are going to even look at it. And my great-grands forget it. But for some reason, so I'm getting ready to do this big book drive. If y'all have got great books, somebody may need them, though, but I don't. I really don't. I've just got this. I hope my floor manages to hold up. Y'all heard about the big sinkhole in Florida? Oh, God, be with those families and, and everything. I'm not making light of that. But, I mean, I got enough trees in my theater on the shelf. I call them books, um, you know, that I pray that my floors will continue. Because I just, I, I collect books. I do. Some of them I get to and some of them I don't. But it's all about developing a better me, trying to develop a better me. And I want to make sure I don't throw away something that can what, develop a better me. But it's come time that if I don't throw away, it's going to be the weight to the better me. I know I'm talking to somebody today. Uh huh. We're holding on to too much. 
some old relationships we just need to sever because we're just trying to hold on because it just, it's just our pack rat nature, men and women. We both go through it. Now, when we talked about committing to uh, uh, developing a better me, some of our obje objectives have been to, uh, or to just have personal development going on in our lives. Uh, number two was growing areas of weakness. And we wanted you to realize that not everything in your life is broken. How many of you know that? Everything in your life is not broken. Just some things, not everything. So don't walk away, oh, they just here, they go beating up on us again. They get it together, or, you know. No, no, no. There are some areas in our lives that, that we need to tweak. But everything is not broken. I'm good. I'm great at some things. Oh, I can outsmile anybody. Oh, I'll outlove you. I'll, I am great with children. I love children. Yesterday, I saw children, I mean, just everywhere, and I was just loving on them. And I had this pen that Divinity got from a, a little place we went to the other day, and it says the mom of the year. That thing was about, that was probably back from 1975, too. You could tell by the print. But I had it on because it made me feel so good because I felt real good about being a good mama. So, and I said, you know what? I'm wearing this because I am a good mama. That's something I'm good at. I'm good at being a mother. Now, not if my children don't reflect that goodness, that's, I can't help that, but I am a good mother. <laughs> and so somebody said, is, it, is Omar your son? I said, no, but I claim every child in Berkeley County, every child that I work with, and every, all, all of Berkeley County's children are my children. Uh, that's why I'm mom of the year, because I can outlove anybody with loving children. So think about this. Identify, what are you good at? What are you good at? Huh? Let's think about that. What are you really good at? Because sometimes you'll, you'll feel like, oh, I do have weaknesses. Oh, then I'm weak at this. And oh, yes, I'm weak at that. And then when the devil is really trying to have a heyday with your life, then you feel like you're weak at everything. But come on, tell yourself, say, I am good at many things. All right? So you've got to define and identify what is it that I'm really good at? What am I really good at? All right? So only you can identify that, but there are areas that we want to tweak and develop and build up. All right? The third point in our objective was building a better me. Number four was building a better we. When I build a better me, we talked about the M in sign language, then we build a better we, the W in sign language. All right? So I'm going to work on me. If it means building a better we, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Because I love unity. I understand from the word of God in Psalms 133 that where there is unity, what happens? God commands. He says, blessings, get over there. He commanded, go over there. Bless them. My goodness, where there is unity. So I'm going to develop a better me so I can make sure to develop a better we. Serving on city council is a different uh, arena for me. When you've grown up in church and you've just been around church people a whole lot, I've, I've been a lot of places and done a lot of things, but it's a, it's a different ball of wax. It's a different way we look at things. It's a different way. We're making legislation. So we're not going to always be, uh, we're not going to always see eye to eye, and that's a good thing. You don't want everybody to be saying yes. You need somebody to be up in there hammering it out, you know, but at the end of the day, we still walk away, high five, you know, okay, cool. We have done what we believe is in the best interest of the we of this community. So you got to learn in building a better me to get in there and not take everything so personal. And you got to get in there and realize that everything is not racial. Now, I deal with that a lot. Not, I deal with that like when I come into the public. Oh, it's just a white black thing. They're doing it for the white people. And they do it. No, it's not really like that, y'all. That's why I need some of you to be on the ballot this next go round. So you can help serve this community and find out what happens when you get behind the scene. It really, sometimes, sometimes, it's not really black and white. It really is about what's in the best interest of the people. But if you're, all, if you're going in there with a chip on your shoulder, then guess what? Then you're going you're gonna to have a warped view, a warped perspective on what we can do for the betterment of the we. When we talk about marriage, we talk about two people that, you know, one person being stubborn saying, let's go over here and eat, eat my haystack, eat from my haystack. And the other person saying, no, let's go over here and eat from my haystack. But when you're, same thing in community service, on your job, at your house, everybody's going to want to have their own way. But if we're going to be a better me for a better we, then we've got to compromise and say, look, 
let's go over here. Now, your haystack for a minute, and let's see what you're saying over here. And then let's come over here, and let's see. And then let's pull it all together. Because if you're going to make it a better we, there is definitely something you're going to have to do with your perspective, your perception. And then you got to tune out everybody else who thinks that, you know, who's stuck in saying, oh, this is the only way they're doing it because of this reason and that reason alone. It's not always what it appears to be. I'm not saying it's never like that now. I know we're in South Carolina. Racial issues have been a problem for a long time, but all around the world, okay? But I'm just trying to make a point that if I'm going to be a better me and make this a better community, then there are some things I'm going to have to go on with a slightly different perspective. I've got to see it their way, and you've got to see it my way, and then we've got to pull it together and make it in the best interest of everybody. Amen? Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm preparing you. I know. Y'all not jumping over pews today, but you don't have to. I need you to do just what you're doing. I need you to listen. I need you to get motivated. I need you to run for political office. I need you to get out there. Why? Because if we're going, if you're sitting back and you're saying, you know, I don't like this about my community and I don't like that. I think we could do better here. I think we could be better there. Then that means that there's something we've got to do. But they don't ever come over here. But when have you been over there? How are we going to make it better if somebody doesn't, like, take the first step? If we're going to build a better we, it's going to have to be more than just talk. It's going to have to be more than just talk. That's right. It's going to have to be more than just talk. So, so that's important as we build a better we. But that comes out of building a better me with a new perspective and a new perception on how I go into things so that I can build a better we. And then finally, our fifth objective was building the kingdom through church growth, all right, which is very important. Some people don't think they need church, and um, but church is still going to be very, very, very important. Now, today, the symptom that we want to focus on, uh, we, we are now at point number, uh, number 15, am I right? For those of you that are keeping up. I know the heaters aren't on in here, right? They are? Okay. All right. If they're on, will somebody, one of the ushers, somebody check on that for me? I know the lights are usually very warm, but this is extremely hot. Unless, now, something has been happening in my life here lately. <laughs> Ooh. So, but, but really, check, that, check the heaters. I think it's just a little bit warm. All right. I see some of you fanning, but you all look like you're about my age. <laughs> And we don't want to freeze out the other folks. I remember when my mom was going through it. I didn't know what it was. I just thought something's wrong with her. We were hot one minute, cold the next minute. Hot the next minute, cold the next minute. So, but we have since learned what was going on. Y'all been through that? <laughs> All right, point number 15 today is I'm having a problem respecting my parents and authority. I am having a problem respecting my parents and authority. Now, I was going to keep the teenagers in here, and you can tell by the topic why. But uh, maybe this is not for the teenagers after all. Ooh, so what in the world is God saying to us? All right, so let's, um, let's look at some scriptures Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 1 through 4, which I think we all probably could quote by heart, and um, especially the first portion of it. But the second portion, as parents, we don't like too much. All right. When you get there, say amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 and 1. If you have it, say amen. All right, let's read together. Ready, read. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Okay, very good. Let's camp out here for just a moment. 
Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Obedience, oh my goodness, is a real serious thing, isn't it? All right, we, Bishop plays a lot with this word, and um, let's see, O-B- I'm just going to use the word, um, let's just, let's just go with the word obey for right now. I think that'll take care of what I need. But if you're going to be, you have to obey. But now remember, I'm not, I'm really not going to focus on the teenagers and the children too much. I am a little bit, but not, not the whole way. So if we are going to be, then we have to obey. Now, is it possible that we want our children, our children, uh, to obey, and we are not obeying? We are models. We are role models to our children. And a lot of times, we expect of our children, perhaps, because we're developing a better me, you have to examine yourself. Now, perhaps we are not modeling what they need to see for them to give us the response that we are looking for. Is that possible? All right, so if we are going to be as children of God, then it's going to be very important that we obey God, all right? So we cannot expect our children to do what we are unwilling to do. You can't tell them to go to church and you're still laying up in the bed. That's a, that's, a, that's a tough act to follow right there, all right? You can't tell them not to cuss if you're cussing. You can't tell them to keep their room clean if your room is not clean. Because lately here, what I'm doing now, I, I was fussing. I was on the warpath last night. I mean, you know, they wanted to go out, and I was in there. I said, I, Dora Aiken, that's my grandmother. That, that woman rose up in me last night, the spirit of her, rose up in me last night. And I was like, well, what? Where you think you're going? I said, and then I said, I see what my grandmama said. You got your little lips are red and you look all cute. <laughs> so, but if they followed you home, what would they find? How many of you having problems with your children keeping their rooms tight? Not all of them, maybe one and a half of them, or half or two of them. You 1.5 of your children. <laughs> and so anyway, but you got to ask yourself, am I keeping my room clean? Am I living above board? Am I examining what I do to make sure that what I'm expecting from them that, that I'm getting? That maybe that's why I'm not getting it. Maybe because I'm not showing forth a great example. So children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy mother and thy father. Are you honoring? For those of you and your parents are still living or there's a guardian or somebody in your life that you've loved or you've adopted as your parent, as a mom, in the absence of your mom or so 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 are you honoring them because honor really is something that has to be demonstrated and if your parents are alive are you honoring them are you honoring them or do your parents see do your children see you go oh ooh, I ain't going to grandma today oh Jesus got grandma oh grandma this grandma that grandma this grandma that and they see you do it and then then now they want you to go and now you like Look, I don't feel like going to grandma's day either. Grandma's this and grandma's that and grandma's this. Okay, modeling, honoring has to be modeled as well. To honor someone, you know, to just sometimes simply pick up the phone and say, hey, how you doing? And I know I'm not a talker on the phone myself, but honor, there's so many ways that we can demonstrate honor, but how can we expect our children to emulate what we don't demonstrate? You know, they must, they must see us emulated and if they hear us gossiping and talking about stuff and and so they're and then then all of a sudden you want them to do the good thing on this on the same front but they can't give what they have not seen all right so so that's going to be real important that you demonstrate what you want to see all right so then it tells us to honor our mother and our fathers and my granddaddy used to say that your days may be long it didn't say your day was going to be long it says that your days may be long. So what does that mean for us as parents? That means that we have to make sure that we set up barriers for our children. How many of you now that we're older, but we're still somebody's children, whether they're here or not, that we wish that we had stayed within those parameters and within those guidelines? I wish I had. I wish I had, huh? 
Don't you wish you had stayed within those parameters and within those guidelines? What do you tell yourself when you realize that you got out of, out of those, those barriers that were set, those healthy barriers? What, what do you tell yourself? Come on, y'all give me some feedback. I want to hear from you. What do you say to yourself when you realize, man, nobody was trying to hurt me. They were really trying to help me. What, what did you find happened when you got outside of those parameters? You made big mistakes. What else? Educated. Girl, that's us. That, that's me right there. Bingo. That's it. I could, how much further along I could have been had I listened. Oh, oh my gosh. How many of you think that sometimes? How much further along I could have been had I listened? Now, if you feel that way about you, then we need to look inward to determine how am I going to raise my child. I've got to make sure that my child doesn't have that same testimony. But how are we going to change that testimony? We're going to have to change that testimony by saying, you know what? It doesn't matter how they feel. I'm going to still set boundaries. I'm going to still set boundaries, but we knew back then the reason we didn't follow what was set before us because we didn't feel like it. Our friends were doing it. We wanted to do it too. How many of you wanted to go someplace where your friends were going and you just begged your parents? Me too, Miss Bonnie. I'll tell you, I cried and I begged for the car. And then you know what? How about when you get there, your friends weren't even there. Now, if you want a good kick in the pants, that's a good one right there. You didn't cry to go, oh, they're gonna, uh, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're, uh, their parents going to let them be there. And, you know, and you just want to be there. And you just know everybody, you got this picture in your mind. It's going to be so much fun. And you're the only one that's not going to be there. And what kind of opportunities God has for me. And da, 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 And on and on and on and on. And then you get there, and your friends didn't make it. What had happened? What happened was their parents never said they could go either. They were perpetrating the fraud to you too. You got to learn to make your own decisions, right? So now, because we miss those moments, and our children are having them, what are you going to do different in your parenting to make sure that they don't come out with the same testimony? All right, let me, let me read some things to you. I found a great book that we have. See, if I didn't have this book, I wouldn't be able to tell you this stuff. No, this is a, kind of a new book we found. And that is one thing we do. So if we do a big book buyback and book exchange and all, this will be great because there's some resources that I'd like to have and some I do need to let go of. All right, but watch this now. Children need parents who are in control. Is your child out of control? Before we begin this discussion, let's uh, examine this important subject. Do any of these statements apply to you? You let your child have their way just to stop their complaining. No, 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 now you know what, right in this, now this little segment, I did ask for your feedback earlier, this one, I want everybody to just stay quiet on this part. And I'll tell you why. Because the Bible tells us not to judge a matter before it is time. You know, because a lot of times we'll just, we'll, we'll just have the judgment on the whole thing. We'll just write the end of the, we'll write the epitaph on the thing, and it, it is finished. But it's not finished. And I want us to think, because I will stand here and I'll say, no, I don't let my kids, no, I don't care how much they complain, I would be lying to you. Sometimes their much complaining wears me down. Y'all remember the little persistent woman and the judge in the book of Matthew, I believe it is, where she kept going to the judge and she wanted something and she just kept going. And the Bible says that her persistence, her continual going to the judge, it wore him down. Somebody said years ago, persistence wears out resistance. Children know this. You knew that. Bishop used to go to his mother and ask him for her car when she was sleeping. Does that not sound like the little clever young man from the ghetto? He said he went, his mom would be all out, you know, 
sleeping up something. He goes, Mama, can I get the key to the car? I want to go somewhere. Yeah, boy, go ahead, go ahead. Just go and leave me alone. Go ahead. So he took that as a yes. And got into some stuff from time to time. Glory to God. So as I read these, I just want you to think about it because we're not going to grow. I'm not trying to impress you anyway. I can tell you Destiny is the most awesome child in the whole wide world. And her ain't got no issues. Her. My own pro. Now her ain't got no. Now she doesn't have any. I can tell you Dynasty is just awesome. Some of y'all know I'm lying, right? Now, <laughs> Dynasty is a totally different child, right? And then I can tell you Divinity, oh, she's just so sweet, just so loving. She just hugs everybody and gives big kisses to all she meets. And you would say, now which Benny is that? <laughs> That's not the one that go to church here, is it? She must go to another church. All right? But anyways, because everybody's at a different stage of development. But children know that if they can wear you down, that they can get what they want. But at the end of the day, is what they want what you believe they should have. And for us that are grown adults, now at what point do you say, okay, if you want what you want so bad, then go for it. But my husband believes that when we get there, then you need to have your own address. I see a witness in the back. Thank you. I see that hand. Brother Rodney, I can always count on you. <laughs> As a matter of fact, y'all teaching me how to parent real good. And Ms. Corliss, too, you sitting right in the same line. Ooh, good. And I thank God for y'all. Y'all are real. Y'all have helped me through the years. Destiny would have never driven a car if Mikey didn't drive first. I'm serious. Yeah, because Destiny, we were still trying to take her to school not long ago. Now she's got her own car. She's doing her own thing. So we thank God for that. Thank God for you all. All right, so you let your child have their own way just to stop their complaining. And I just heard the Lord say, grandchildren. I know we are pitiful. I, I see some of y'all, and I take some of y'all kids as my grandchildren. But I'm telling you, I know them grandkids, they don't even have to complain too hard. It's just the nature of a grandparent that just want to do for your grandbabies. They don't even have to whine too hard. They just get that little puppy dog look in their eyes. Gams, grandma, grandpa. Hmm, mm -hmm. I see all y'all witnesses in there out in the audience. Okay? And I see y'all watching me by television tonight on this Monday night. I know your grandchildren wear you down, and it doesn't take much, no. But what about those children? Do we just give them what they want because they're complaining? You know, and I think we do it because we're afraid that they're going to stop loving us. But would you have stopped loving your parents because they didn't let you have your way? As we look back, we said it might have given us more time invested in something great. So we might just have to take that chance on them not loving us to set up the proper boundaries that they need. Huh? Are you, let me, can we do a little, little poll here? Are you afraid of your children hating you? Maybe some of you are in a stage right now you feel like your children do hate you. My mama doesn't care about that. Let me tell you about Leola Aiken bias. I have these case in points in my life. I told somebody the other day at the church, I went to Calvary the other week and I told the folks there, I don't think me and my mother will ever be like in the term that we call in life best friends. She will always be mommy. She will always be my mother. Why? She has taught me, she, if anybody has ever walked out the role of motherhood to this, and she told my kids the other day, she said, look, if your mama says anything out of the way, I might still hit her. I will still correct her. I will still look at her a certain way. So my mother is a mother to me. Those boundaries and those barriers, they still make a difference in my life. She's not trying to be my best buddy, because after we go running around at the mall, which sometimes we do, and have fun going out to eat and have go from family house to family house doing fun things, after all of that, I better still R-E-S-P-E-C-T her. And then I'll find out what it means to me. Because if I don't, she will bring correction to me. We are never that buddy-buddy where she can't be my mother. Until she goes to her grave or I go to mine. Whichever. Hopefully, you know, she's there. But anyway, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't want to see her go. But y'all know what I'm saying. She is mother bias. I mean, when we call her mother, that's what she is. I know sometimes we don't like her. I know we don't. But I'm telling you, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, you think I'm something now. What if I had really listened to everything she had said? Mm-hmm. I didn't. You can tell. Okay, now, let me ask you this. Got some, some parts of my testimony I don't like too much either. Y'all got some too, right? 
But what are we going to do with our children, y'all, to get them to obey us? Don't be afraid to get them to obey you. Do you let your child interrupt you? You hate to disappoint your child. Now, I know that's a big, that's a big category right there. You, you don't really like to disappoint your child. I know when I talked to Bishop, you know, he was disappointed because of their financial standing. He couldn't get a yearbook in high school and because of their financial standing at the time. So he just pretended that, oh, I don't want that old thing. I don't, I don't need that, you know. But now here he is 40-something years old, and I'm searching every website trying to find his yearbook for him because it means that it really did mean that much to him. So I know in general we don't want to disappoint our children. But we have to be honest with where we are. What you going to do, go rob a bank? Oh, that'll really make them feel good, huh? All right. Now let me ask you this. Uh, do you ignore misbehavior? Do you make empty threats? You, quote unquote, ask your child to obey instead of expecting the child to obey. All right? So now, let's go back to this one. I want to I wanna hit this one. Do we ignore misbehavior? Let me hit this, and I'm going I'm to have to close this. Our time is already gone. But let me, let me show you this. With uh, misbehavior, and especially when our children start calling each other names, and they don't want to obey, and they don't want to do what is right, I, I, obedience and, and forgiveness, to me, they go together hand in hand, and it's really huge. I tell my children if they wrong each other, or they do something like toward me and then, you know, you, you stomp and you accidentally slam the door. No, no, you got to come and you got to make that thing right. I'm not going to put clothes on your back, food on the table, and be there to do just about whatever you need me to do. As mama, there's something about the nature of a mother and there's something awesome about the nature of a father that we will do anything for our children. But you're not, I'm not going to let my children misbehave. And if they need to come and ask forgiveness and make it right, they're going to come front and center, and they're going to make it right. Now, do I do it every time? I might skip a time or two. But my whole goal, you've got to ask forgiveness. If you've done wrong, because if you don't ask forgiveness, you'll think you can go through life doing anything you want. Oh, I do have some law enforcement in the house this morning. I forgot about y'all. That's right. I got some law enforcement because guess what? If you don't listen to mama and daddy and you don't get it right with your sisters and brothers, you're going to be answering to the law, the officer. If you don't answer to them, you're going to have to answer to your teacher or a, a patrol officer in the schoolhouse. And if you don't listen to none of the authorities that are set around you, then guess what? You're going to be saying hello to Mr. Death. I've got some friends out in Florida. I'm telling you. They would not listen. They would not make things right. And I'm telling you, one day they were found wrapped around a tree. And don't think that your disobedience causes you to walk away unscathed with no, you, with something that, a price that you have to pay. There is a price that we have had to pay. Now, I'm talking to adults this morning. But I want, I want to talk to you strong because I want you to go back. Now, me and you, and when we go home, I want us to think about how we are rearing our children as much as we love them as much as they scream as much as they complain as much as they want what they want how much are we going to let them have their way remembering just yesterday my mother was talking to me and when I stepped outside of those barriers or those boundaries look at what it cost me I don't care about how everybody everybody's situation is different and I will say that but we have to take strong hold to being the leaders and the authority in our homes. I see my mom over here just shaking her head, just nodding so hard. You know, these moms and grandmas and great grandmas, they understand. And they know, and I know what I'm saying is right, even though I'm going to have to go home and practice what I'm even telling you. Because those kids will complain. They will do what they want to do. But, but in the name of love... In the name of love, I love my child, so I'm not going to tell them to stop. We think that if we tell them to correct themselves or correct the behavior, that we are, we're withholding some great opportunity from them. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it carefully. 
whether it was this last current president or the president before that or the president before that, any time we set our children up to defy the, uh, the greatest authority in this land, we don't know that we have opened up something great over our houses. When I say great, something awfully great, something awful and terrible. Because I remember when the authoritarian of this country wanted to speak to the children in an educational forum to motivate them and to encourage them. How many of you remember that? And you had parents who were saying, I'm not signing a waiver for my children to hear from him. Whatever reason, you didn't want them to hear from him. But when you despise that highest authority in the land, oh, you can make your own choice. You can despise anything you want, but just know this. The very thing that you open up and despise, those children will say, well, if you allowed me to despise that authority, then you too are an authority in my life. And it may come a day when that child will say, I despise your authority. And I know I'm telling you the truth. I know I'm telling you the truth. It is not what we expect, it's what we inspect. How do you want your children to conduct themselves? How do you want them to carry on life? Children must obey their parents and the Lord. This is the right thing to do. Now, whether you got to put them in timeout, whether you got to, you know, get that seat of the emotion with a, well, some people use a little wooden spoon. I'm not, I don't, look, I don't care. The Bible says that if you whack them on the, on the whatever, you know, how you, whatever you got to do, I'm not talking about no abuse now. Y'all know there's a difference between abuse and bringing correction to a situation. But uh, this one thing I know that the old blind man said, they said, who healed you, Jesus? Or, or was, so what, what, what happened? The, the man said, I don't know. But I did this one thing I know. I once was blind, but now I see. Look, I know this one thing. I've got some children, and I know this one thing. They are not going to rule my house. Now, I say this to, say, to talk to you all today. That sounds good and that feels good because I'm spitting the fire right now. But what are you really going to do in personal development when you get home with your children? We've got to sit down and get some thoughts in mind. I'm not going to let my child just get up in my face and say anything to me. I am not going to let my child curse me out in my house unless that's the way you roll. But in my house, that's ultimately disrespectful to curse at me or even to curse, as my granny would say, to curse to your word. You just use a little few words. No, you ain't going to cuss in my house. You're not going to do it. No, you're not going to do it. And then you're not going to treat me any kind of way and then hold your hand out. That ain't even going to work. But we've got to determine in each one of our households how we're going to do things. All right? It is important that our children obey us. Because it's, this is the right thing to do. And I really started thinking about that. Children, obey your parents and Lord, for this is right. So if they don't obey, your, or obey their parents, then that means it's not right. That's not right. That's not right. If your children don't obey you, it is not right. It is just not right. And then when something is not right, then what does God do when something is not right? Or what, does, what is Satan allowed to do when stuff is not right? And then we don't bring correction to it. Obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. So that means if you don't obey your parents in the Lord, then this is not right. It is not right. It is not right. So what are we going to do? Personal development. Oh, they say you got to put your kids in time out. Well, time out does nothing for mine. Time out gives them time to think of how they can do the next thing. And when I talk about my children, I'm not just talking about my three, because I have, I told y'all, everybody, I claim everybody's my children, and I've had an after-school care for 14 years, so I've worked with children. I, I really claim them all as my own, all right? So what are you going to do? You know, you got to do what works in your house, all right? I see some stuff, children all up in the stores, trying on shoes, not just trying them on, clicking, clocking, and slobbing, and running all around the store. That's for, uh, something somebody's got to buy after they get through playing house. My kids don't do that. I'm not going to let them do that. I'm not going to let them do that. You're not going to be, you know, picking up all, just all the little scenarios that we go through 
I know I'm talking about younger kids, but then there are older children. You know, you shopping and they're just loading up the buggy. But they just cussed you out before you got to the store. Now they want you to, you know, buy them up. Man. No, we ain't going to do that either. We're not going to do that. Yeah, a job sounds good. Yeah, and if you're too young, then get your act together. Because if you do right, if you obey, the, if you obey me and the Lord because this is right, you get anything from me just about. How many of you know your children do right? You do. I'm telling you, my daughter, it's your pleasure. You just want to do good for them. Yeah, I know. You, you know that feeling. That's right. That's right. Now, the final scripture says, provoke not your children to wrath. It says fathers. I'm so glad it said fathers. <laughs> but y'all know that that can go either way. Because somebody would say, look, I'm a single parent, so I'm the mother and the father. But I believe God was speaking just to us in general about provoking our children to wrath. Now, there's, we want them to obey and honor. I'm just trying to give you a quick finish so you have something to take home with you that you can work with. We probably hit this again on Tuesday night. But we got to make sure that we don't provoke our children to wrath. You want them to do something. Sometimes the reason we have such battles in the house is because we don't plan what we're trying to do. You know, you just kind of catch the kids. How many of your children, you ask them 50 years, you know, 50 times to get the remote, and it's like two, two you know, two maybe a yard away from you. Come here, baby. Come get this remote. How about do you know? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got I got some young enough people in here that they really they're scared to say you know give me a a, a real confirmation because their parents in here too. You see. <laughs> All right. So at the same time, don't provoke your children when your kids really are getting like frustrated and they're like, oh my God, I just can't take this anymore. You have to then. Don't, don't, you don't have to get in their face and say, oh, am I, am I giving you too much to do? What do you think they're going to tell you? Yeah. <laughs> so, but you think, make sure. We've learned that children need, you know, things done in order. They need a list. You know, if you want them to do their chores, then it's a great thing to be able to say, all right, this is what I expect of you today. Pastor, sounds like you're talking to a 10-year-old. No, I'm talking about my 16-year-old. I'm talking about, I'm talking about even for me getting older it is just so good when I get up with a list and I know what my direction is for the day if everybody's calling you everybody, I need you to do this, need you, then you get to the end of your day and you go oh my god I didn't do anything I set out to do how many of you get how many of you get that way sometimes I haven't done anything I intended to do because I always say if you don't have a set of guidelines for you somebody will have a set for you somebody will have a vision for you and your whole day will be in so many directions all right so make sure that some some of our children they you know they may have they may be dealing with certain special circumstances and and sometimes it's not so I don't let people label my kids either no we just might have to handle things a little bit better I may need to give them a list okay divinity this is what I expect I need these three things done all right and so you give that to them and then you monitor that now sometimes parents want to give up and you just want to say it's the kids fault and you say I'm just sick and tired of it but you haven't done any training the Bible tells us in Proverbs to train up a child in the way he should go. Training is just what it means. you got to repeat that thing over and over again until you see some progress, or until you see what it is that you're looking for out of that child's life. Amen? All right, so I've said a lot today, and I'm out of time today. And so we're going to have to say some more about it on Tuesday night. And so Bishop will probably be here to bring a good balance to it, but, but this is according to Dr. Tanya Aiken Taylor and the word of the Lord. And so, uh, but anyway, it's really important that we walk in obedience. But I think the biggest thing I can say today is to make sure parents that we're doing what it is that we want to see our children repeat in their lives. Because if we're not honoring God, if we're not walking by faith in God, why should they? Hmm? If we're not having, a, if we don't believe God, if we're not examining and, and uh, utilizing our faith, why should they? If you're not reading your Bible, why should they? If you're not doing your prayers, then why should they? If you're not committed to the fast, then why should they? My kids get on me about that sometimes. If I'm having my moment, my personal moment, they're like, Mama, you cheating the fast. I ain't cheating it. I'm just having a moment. <laughs> I'm going to get back on it, but I ain't cheating it. I use such strong, harsh words. <laughs> So, but if they see us do that, then they're going to say, well, look, you're playing with it, so I'm going to act like I'm fasting this morning. I'm going to eat later today, too. And uh, so, so let's, let's just keep those things in mind. And we'll be talking more about children obeying your parents and the Lord because it is the right thing to do. How many of you know when your house is in accord and in great obedience unto the Lord, 
what a beautiful thing. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it just beautiful? Prophet David said, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? When the whole house is in unity, the whole house is on one accord, and every now and then you feel that moment. You feel like you're on that track, and it feels so good. The other night I started cooking dinner. I didn't mean to cook a big spread. It just turned out that way. And I mean, it was after the first, so we had fried chicken. We had rice. We had broccoli. We had cake. We had, I mean, it was a big spread. I sat at the big table. I lit the candles. Those are my candles for the showing of the house. But I said, no, tonight is a special night. My house is in accord. And I love it. It felt so good. Everybody was talking to one another, loving one another. Well, then again, Vinny was trying to make a show out of it. But she had a little audience, so a little actress inside of her, praise God. But it was such a good night. And when your house is in order, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you today. We give your name praise, honor, and glory we thank you that this is the day that you've made, and we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it. And you want, Father God, more than anything else, for our houses to be run in great obedience. You want our children to walk in obedience. But, Lord, more than anything else, you want us to walk in obedience, to uh, do the things that we expect of our young people. And so, Father, we thank you today, and we just ask that you would bless our houses as we're developing a better me. Teach us, O oh Lord how to rear our children. Teach us to love them. Teach us to be strong toward them, Father. Teach us to set boundaries without being afraid that they're going to walk away. But Father, let us be confident in knowing that at the end of the day, a wise child will come back and say, Mom, Dad, thank you. I wish you had done more of this. I was just young and I didn't understand. And had I done what you wanted me to do, oh, how much further along I would be. So Father God, today help us not to cheat our children, our nieces and nephews, whoever is a part of our lives. Help us to not cheat them out of a great experience to do what is right in life unto the Lord as they walk in obedience. We give your name praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.